for far too long. We've been told what to do, what to think, how to be. No more. The old paradigm is crumbling, falling all around us. Burn it all. It's my mission to bring you back to your natural state of luxury, to lead you to an empowered place with energetic intention. Luxury is a personal, expansive experience, one that's been kept from you, hidden away, a soul experience broken into a million pieces. Luxuriously fierce is for those who know there's more, who desire more, even if you don't know what more is. It's for those who are ready to burn old paradigms to the ground and walk through the flames to the other side. For those who are ready to be bold in their being, fierce in their feminine. Luxuriously Fierce is not just a brand, it's a movement. It's not something I do, it's something I am. Together, we are setting fire to the old and forging a new path, a new world. One where openness and truth are the norm, where changing the world begins with healing yourself. If you're here on this earth, in this lifetime, to light a fire and burn everything you believe to be true to the ground, Welcome to my world. Burn it all and watch the ashes fly. Welcome back to the Luxuriously Fierce podcast. I am so excited today to have Agnes Douch with me. Agnes is an intimacy and embodiment coach who believes in flirting with life. And we are definitely coming back to that piece right there. <laughs> She integrates sensuality, presence, and somatic movement into her work. She has a gift for curating uniquely intimate experiences and facilitating transformation in the body, mind, and spirit through her workshops, through her retreats, and her very luxurious one-on-one -on -one offerings. She holds a fierce knowing and personal power and can help you drop into your truth and ignite your fullest expression. And we are here for that over here at Luxuriously Fierce. So welcome to the show. I am so excited for this conversation. We've already been on here for 20 minutes talking, just chatting, getting to know each other. And the dynamic, the just, you know, the the natural feeling of sitting down and chatting with you is it. It's the it factor, right? It factor. Somebody said that. They said they, they told me that I have the feminine factor. She's like, you have the feminine factor. I'm like, ooh. I that is a high her. compliment. That's a high compliment. This is on another podcast uh, that, and she like literally said it. I was just like, damn, girl, it is true. Like, I feel like what, what you just brought me into, like with this introduction, like, I'm like, oh yeah, I forgot about all those little pieces of them. I forgot that I'm good at what I do. You're a fucking badass human surviving in this world that is kind of shitty sometimes, yeah. for, especially for a woman. But like being that leader in feminine, in the feminine quality, you know, the softness, the like ability to like be surrendered, be in your own sensuality and like taking care of yourself on a high level. What we were talking about right before we were recording that part, you know, like, and it, it takes, it takes a lot, you know, it takes the fucking courage, it takes yeah. a lot to like land in these places of who I am and who I've become to this moment. So thank you for bringing me on here because I just, I'm ready for this conversation to unfold yeah. from where it goes and just to bring bring that it, you know, that feminine factor in. I'm really excited. Let's, let's have you talk about you. Who are you? What do you do? Why do you do it? Okay. How much time do we have? So <laughs> I know that's the thing. And I always say this on this podcast is like, it sounds like such a simple thing, but then you're just sitting there like, where do I even start? Yeah. hundred percent. And at the same time, I always, I love like, 
I'm all about bringing it into the body and like, what's true for me in this moment? What wants to come out? What do like the energy and the frequency of what people may want to hear and listen into without having this agenda? Because there's, we're very like evolving human beings. So for me, like I've gone on, like, I swear like 20 different lifetimes of things that I've evolved into through I've become I tried on a lot of different almost like energetic patterns of who I am but right now I feel like I've really come into myself like over you know the I'm over the many lifetimes before but now like to this date at this moment I just feel that I've really anchored into exactly what you just talked about like who I am within the sense of this feminine being that is able to, you know, expand and be and be present with and be in the body and able to like fold others in that space as well. I think that's the biggest component to it and kind of like bringing it into with others is just like, because I've experienced a lot of layers of deep healing and trauma and D- different dynamics and relationships and in within my own business and so many different things that I've like been a part of that now I get to really arrive and I feel like almost like this bigger version of myself and still able to expand and grow and become even more of who I am because I believe that really at the end of the day we're really just finding like pieces of each other in others like I feel that community is such a huge part of the currency that I've like literally been part of and I love that dynamic of other humans and just fueling them and bringing them into my experience and never feeling like I am actually you know I'm not the leader I'm not the coach I'm not none of those things because it's just like meeting you and I together at this moment, the presence of that, the beauty of that, the intimacy of that, the like introspection of that. And there's so many different stories that I could bring in. That doesn't matter because it's just about like, I am who I am and you feel me. Oh, that is so powerful. (sighs) There's so many things I want to unpack here. Where do I start? I love what you said about the bigness of ourselves and how there's always something else, right? There's, and when we, when we immerse ourselves in a community, we get to feel that, right? And I've been having a lot of conversations lately around calibration, energetic calibration to other people, I guess. More specifically in the context of, you know, having a mentor or a coach, but even in a community, calibration is such, such a powerful tool I think if done in the right way and especially as women we've been taught to calibrate to the energy of everyone else except for ourselves and when I'm talking about calibration what I mean is like being in someone's energy and feeling their energy and wanting to integrate that wanting to be that right and But really what happens is when we decide that we want to calibrate to someone's energy, we look to the how, not to the be. And so when that person's energy falls, when they're no longer in alignment with us, then we're kind of left back at square one, right? If you're always calibrating to someone else's energy, what happens when their energy is no longer in alignment and it's no longer what you want to be true for you right then you're you're left back at square one on your own so to speak and so I think there's there's such a difference between calibrating someone else's energy and calibrating to your own but then we bring in this duality of I mean the definition of calibrate is to (laughs) there has to be there has to be another component right there has to be something for you to calibrate to And so being in someone's energy, being a a part of a community, community is a really big topic, a really popular topic, actually, on this podcast. 
I would challenge you to find a podcast episode where someone that where we did not talk about community, right? And when you're a part of a community that you see yourself in, when you're a part of a community that you feel seen and heard and understood and respected and supported and inspired and all of the things, the magic there is just indescribable, really. And you get to see the, those different levels of bigness of yourself. Yeah, I, I've always been drawn to that, like that, the, that sense of finding home in other people. Yet the biggest journey has been coming home to myself. Yeah. Because I've been deeply influence I'm very sensitive I'm very like tapped in I'm very pulled to others yet for me it's been this beautiful journey of like standing for myself standing for what I believe in being in the values being like uniquely who I am and not blending and not like conforming and not shifting and not shape shifting into and like trying to fit in and camouflage myself into other humans. But that's been a big fucking portion of my life. And I don't dismiss that because I've seen like how like different people have shaped me, how I have felt and experienced other people's frequencies and energies and how that has felt in my body because I will always come back to that like the like way that it feels in your own individual body like when you listen to somebody like you could feel like if it feels safe and tender and like ability to like sometimes have that edge of maybe growing a little bit but if it feels too explosive where you might fucking blow up and like it's just too much. Like that's not your person right now. And that's okay. That's another thing I feel like, especially in the world of coaching, mentorship, teaching, of facilitating all of leadership, like we're not always meant to be on the same journey all the time, parallel to each other. Sometimes there are moments where you're kind of like on a different road path and you're over here and taking on a different kind of wave, like of like floating in this space or like riding that wave in this space and somebody else is doing it in this space. And sometimes that those two worlds kind of can collide and blend and dance with each other. That's why I always love to come back to the flirting with life because it's, to me, that teasing, that playing, that flirt, that like ability to be curious, you know, you, you know, what this child, like, I'm so excited to meet you level. Like think of kids and how expressed they are. That to me is just, yes, you know, that feeling of ecstatic, like let's, let's bring it. And, and it also doesn't have to be high vibe, always positive. I think there's something sexy as fuck with a woman, especially when she's angry and on a fucking mission because she's got a righteous point on that, right? To conquer the world where we are right now, it takes a lot of courage and it makes me angry how many years it literally has taken to come back up and how many women are still suppressing themselves by choice <sighs> and sometimes they don't have that ability to get out of the, the thing that they're in like abusive relationship or anything like that so it's not for me to dismiss and like not honor the path that somebody is on but it, it's it's like kind of it's coming back and being like I see you you yeah. know I really see you Oh, and like bringing that person on their your journey alongside of you, but like having your own bubble of like your own shell of 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 your own energy, the fullness of who you are alongside of others. That to me is like literally like community in the sense of like unity, right? Okay. Like, being like the united. Because I do not believe that it's about one person rising to the top and everyone else is just like, can I get there? No, like, let's go together. Like, sometimes it's like one person has a little bit more immediate uh, perspective and opening uh, and observation. It's like, can you share that, that secret with others? Because there's enough to go around all of us. And I know when I went through so many points at this, but like, I just, I like, this is such a passion of mine, right? And I just yeah. feel like so deeply important and it's such a rooted quality of like 
just like, I'm standing for you. I'm standing right here for you, regardless of if you ever have an interaction with me or not. Like I am here because I could feel you. Yeah. You just hit the nail on the head. Like there's there's so much, so much. I love what you said about kind of trying to reach that, that next, next version of yourself. When you were talking about stretching a little too far, right? There's a level of calibration and integration there. So you, you learn something new, you see someone who has things that you want, who has big energy that you want to be in, who stands in her personal power, who is empowering and inspiring as fuck. And you are just ready to be that. And we, re- we want to jump there. We want to be where that person is. But it just doesn't work that way, right? We've got to take our time. We've got to integrate the, the, that next rung on the ladder, right? We can't jump to the top. It's too much too fast. And then we fall because mm. we can't hold it. And it, it really does just come back to being in your body and listening to your body and paying attention which is really hard it's really hard for us to do as women because we have been taught not to do that and I think that flirting with life first of all I just love that phrase it's phenomenal I love it so much flirting with life is the perfect way to to do that to come back to yourself, right? To figure out what it is that you want and to figure out what it is that you desire. And even in saying that phrase, flirting with life, like I already feel like it makes me smile. It it makes me feel light and like I want to share something really exciting. And I don't know what that is, but I want to share it. And I have anything exciting to share, but I want to share something. And it just makes me think of literal flirting and I th- and this is something that I've been thinking about a lot lately is so it's I mean, of course, you're here. and We're having this conversation as I've been thinking about these things, because of course, but I've been thinking a lot lately about how we have been we as women have been basically taught to either flirt or not. And it's very, you know, I had someone in conversation with me not that long ago. And they just kind of casually slipped into conversation, casually, subtly, but it wasn't very subtle, (laughs) that they have a partner, that they're married. And I'm like, okay, cool. You know, and it made me think of how, like, as a woman, if we're not rude or standoffish with someone, then we must be flirting. Mm. We must, you know, want something more. And I'm just like, that's not it. I'm flirting with life. I'm having fun. I'm showing up in my fullest expression. I'm just really fucking nice to people, okay? <laughs> I'm just trying, you know, I'm holding a conversation with you. And it's, it was one of those moments where I was like frustrated by this world that we live in, but also able to recognize that this is the world that we've been raised in. And I can understand that that person probably did think that I was flirting with them because that's how, I mean, that's what we've been taught to think. And it was just like, it was one of those moments where I saw the duality of it all. Yeah, it's interesting that you bring this forward because I am like a stand for flirting. Like every moment at every mo- like time, I'm just because I feel that it's, it's the innocence, the purity. It's the beauty of like, I just want to get to know you. Yeah, yeah, like just like, can I meet you with like where you are and allow things to kind of unfold without any expectations, without any pressures or anything like that? It's like it literally allows that inner child in you to come back out and play and be part of your experience. And I feel that it's such a deep component of what I'm meant to actually bring into this world of like allowing that to be still like an essence that is cherished, that is admired, that is maybe even worshipped, right? Like my Instagram name is the flirt queen and I own it, right? Like, yeah. like 
I'm the flirt queen. And it's not because I have like, it's not like I'm just like here. I'm just like, let's fuck, let's fuck. Like, I'm not like an invitation <laughs> open to like business. Like, you know, like I'm not like, but at the same time, like <clears throat> what's wrong with us, especially as women, mm -hmm. allowing our sexuality to come forward. Yeah. There's a beautiful invitation of, you know, opening the heart, opening up your legs, but not from the space of like, I need you to come into my space. It's just this ownership of allowing more space for you to own your own self in this world that has told you to close off, protect, be safe, be that little fucking good girl. Don't say the wrong thing. Perform. Be nice. Be da -da 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 -da. story, 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 story. All of the expectations. And now I'm here. Like, I'm like, yes, I don't believe in like being disrespectful and like rude just to like, you know, disrupt things or anything like that. But you get to use your voice. Say what you want. You get to say what you don't want. And at the same time, do not dismiss or diminish your fullest expression of who you are. You do not have to be this sexual vixen and like ability to like open up to everything and potentially like do burlesque dancing and pole dancing neat. But <laughs> you could be your own version of who you are that is true to you and choose that. You know, pick that out of the million and one things that you want to be. And that gets to evolve. That gets to change. That could be like, you could literally, I'm looking at a painting I did. And this painting, I could literally make it completely different. You know, recreate the canvas of your own life as you choose. Pick the colors or no colors or whatever you get to choose. Don't be, don't be a version of my, like who I am or who you are, like May as you, like just find the places that feel like really like yeah, like something like bubbling up inside of you what like turns you on and it doesn't have to be from sexual energy at all that's just a place that I feel is meaning to come back almost like full circle and reclaim reclaim it and make it like innocent and pure again from just like the the like essence of what it is if that makes sense it makes complete sense. And I think the thing for me, like in, in this experience is, you know, it's never my intention to make someone uncomfortable with my, with my bigness and with my personality and, you know, and with the way that I facilitate conversation with people. But I do recognize that that might be the impact, right? Because intent, intention and impact are not the same thing. And it just made me really kind of sad that we live in a world where if someone is nice to you, that immediately means something more, right? That immediately means that they're flirting with you or trying to get in your pants or whatever, right? And it just made me, it just made me really sad for this world where we hold back things like ourselves, our, our bigness, the way that we talk to people out of fear of being seen as something we're not necessarily. We hold back emotions like love. Like how often do you tell people that you love them? Maybe you do a lot, but you know, for, for a lot of people, it's very much on holidays. You know, you see people on holidays, you're like, you tell them that you love them or on deathbeds or tragic events or, you know, it's it's like we have these different things that are very much reserved for certain circumstances. And it just made me really sad about about that. And I think I think that you would agree with this in, is that the flirting with life and standing in your bigness being fully expressed is being intimate with yourself right and not in a sexual way necessarily but I feel like personally in this a personal reflection is like me being able to hop on here with you and anybody else who's on the podcast and have these conversations and and hold space for you and for you to hold space for me and for me to have fully expressed conversations in you know in my real life and my personal life as well that comes from me 
doing the work, that comes from me unlearning everything that I've been taught to be. It comes from me coming back to myself and learning mm -hmm. and understanding what intimacy means to me in terms of how I want to show up in the world and in terms of who I am as a human and what I want. It means intimacy in terms of you know, my radiance and my presence and my power and my essence and in all of in all of these things, right? Exactly. That's exactly what it is. And I love to break down intimacy into into me, I see. Ooh. Right? Yeah. Okay. Differently. Into me, I see, right? To me, like you, I see, right? It's like yourself, introspection inner oh, i love that quality and design right like you feel it even if you put your hand on your heart right now like you feel the vibration Ooh, right like mm, like that feels just like yeah it's like where does that land in your own body right because it's like there's truth that is spoken there's a vibration that is felt and and it's, it's stripping it away from the conceptual normal thing and reclaiming it into woo, like into me i see god damn that is good that is it i thought we already had the it factor but no more. there's more there's always more like there is more and it's fascinating because i i had to like look at this word again because i it's like something that obviously like intimacy and embodiment comes, right? Like it felt really good for me to claim those words. And then there was new layers of that. And then I was like, I'm claiming that intimacy is going to be one of my offerings because I just feel like that when that comes into place and it's, it can be very intimidating at the same time. But then when you just strip it down to these bare, bare bones of like, like, coming back in and like literally looking through all the like mushy gushy yummy delicious words of like you know all the layers of who we are to that like mm, that like yum the middle you know like point like that 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 that's all i got <laughs> i love that. this is what happens though because it's like you know we have a point where it's just like there <clears throat> i'll bring it back again around like beauty of words right of course you're listening in there's there's we are both speaking oh then there's layers of feel right feel no words no words need to be felt or like it's just like it's like this it's just like a point of like experiencing yes. experiencing yourself from the void and the in between like even like breath, right? There's always an in between, ooh, right? Like there's in between, like little pauses. It's like give yourself that luxurious space of taking it in to a next level. And I'm gonna bring it into sex because this is totally resonating with sex as well. Like it's like you know when we bring in that like moment of being able to really experience that other individual human that's in front of you that person that's in front of you and like take them in fully and that does not mean that you need to be like having sex in the typical sense of it it's just like look at something yeah right like that 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 purity and that quality behind it that's just a point i really wanted to land because i just feel like yeah like it's just it's almost like it just feels there's a different like quality around it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I find the deeper I dive into, you know, personal development, really learning more about myself, opening myself up to new concepts, having these conversations. The more I do these things, the more I find that language really fails me and mm -hmm. that I have a lot to say in ways that I feel like the English language can't express and that comes from feeling right mm -hmm. so I just feel into it and hope that the words that come out of my mouth or that I write down 
in my journal or, you know, on my Instagram or website or whatever, express that. And sometimes I do and sometimes I don't. But that is, it's one of, it's again, this duality where sometimes I get really frustrated by not being able to fully express myself, right? Because that's, that's my life. That's my experience as a human. And for so many of us women is not being able to express ourselves, right? And now I do. And here I am at this place where I do and language fails me. And so while that's really frustrating, it's also really empowering almost in a way that I then get to decide what words mean and from bringing it back, you know, so many words in our society, quote unquote, mean things that they don't actually mean. We've come to equate certain words with certain things like and just a, an example we've come to equate intimacy with the physical act of sex exactly exactly and like what you're talking about with uh words right <clears throat> it's a vibration yeah vibration like yeah. one of the most powerful experiences i've had in my life has been in a in a relationship that we didn't speak the same language and the level of being in love from connection from a level of yes for sure intimacy seeing each other patient ability to just meet each other in that moment like and there's other been other moments where I've been like in silent retreats like meditation retreats I didn't hear their voice I felt them yeah I experienced them Right. So it's, it's like the, there's like a coding, there's like a magic spell that could be put on anything that comes through. Like I'm very intentional. I think words are so fucking sexy. Like I just love like the just ability to like express and share. Like there's a, there's a very huge intention behind how I speak and where it comes from. And that's something I've learned through in my own ability to like communicate and this is one of the things that I love to guide and teach on is just like where does like the, the voice come from because the voice could come from different points in our bodies and the deeper the it roots down to your fullness of your whole being of everything of what you are and what you exist in the more it is felt and experienced and like people hear it because there's noise right? There's a lot of noise out there. And then there is a lot of like points where you just get like this moment where you're like disrupted. You're like, well, I heard that because it landed differently. You know? Yeah. Oh, I love that. And I feel like we are moving towards a world, a society where things are felt, right? Where th those times when language fails us, in a way that we feel like maybe the words that we're using aren't fully expressive of what we're actually trying to say. The energy of what we're trying to say, the vibration of what we're trying to say, whether, you know, it, even when someone reads those words that don't fully capture that, they feel it, right? I feel like I just feel that for this world. Like, I feel like, I feel it so close. It's so close that we're almost there. Yeah. <laughs> Almost there, guys. Hold on. But yeah. And not dismissing you you you'll already hear me doing this throughout the whole episode. And I do this all the time, but the sounds, mm, right? Mm, yeah. Um, like if you ever want like <laughs> like completely see me in my own um practice, especially like yoga or an embodiment practice or my sensual, whatever I'm doing, like a practice of that, like there's it's just like these like there's just like depths of like expression through just like moans and sounds and like but it, it's like some it's my truth it's like how I express yeah because I know that this can be very much it can be like you can hear it in other people or like even people like in sex I mean in the past for sure I've definitely like faked orgasms <laughs> but it sucked it fucking sucked I did not have an orgasm right like but like, and one thing I'd love to say is because it's so true, like I used to completely like fake orgasms and fake life. 
yeah perform this right yeah this is just like a note for everyone if you're faking your orgasm what else are you faking in your life yeah food for thought there's there's a lot like i mean like i grew up in like a really wealthy uh, city and my family we immigrated from poland right so there was a restart that happened pretty much like when we moved here and there was this like disconnect of being like, where do I belong? And like, how do I fit in at like a different level of my, the way that my family like grew up? Like we had a lot of, like when I look back at it now, we had a lot of abundance in so many different ways, but it was just like this, this like, well, I don't want my friends to see this and this and this because they have this and that that I don't have and then especially like during like high school and you know like and then going into partying and stuff like that like there was this sense of like I'm showing up I'm being this like this particular person that like I feel like people may accept but do you understand how broken I was inside how much I was suffering how many layers of places that I like did not even recognize that were there and it takes a lot of courage to be on this path of personal growth because it, yep. it's courageous. It, it, it takes a grit. It takes, it takes a different level of resilience to go into those tender wounds that are, are needing to be opened up again, like that are going to be painful, that are going to hurt for a, for a little moment or a long moment, like but to stay with it, like. I just applaud literally everyone that's on this path because regardless of like the percentage that you do this, if you're an entrepreneur, especially, and like, this is the life path that you've chosen and like that probably chose you. Let's get that right. It's probably, <laughs> let's just correct that point. But like it, your soul contract. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. It, it's, it takes, it takes a a lot, a lot, a lot of layers without needing to know like what those layers are. You could feel it and you could feel when somebody is speaking from a space of like embodying their own unique expression and like their own unique mission and their purpose and their passion. Like just start feeling literally like this is, this is it. Like feel into places and sometimes it might feel like edgy and uncomfortable like there might be moments where you listen in to me or to may or whoever else you experience and it might feel a little like i don't know like if i could if i could open up to that but if it, there's an intrigue if there's like a level of like potential of like i, I want to get curious about it like get like just get curious it, it's not we don't we're not asking you to get naked all over the place like just a little, just a little tease you know <laughs> I love that. A healthy edge, right? I feel like when you meet those edges of yourself, those points where you're like, oh, do I, do I want to continue this? Is this something that I'm open to? Am I, am I there yet? Am I ready for this? When you meet those edges of yourself, we either, you either meet them and, and move past them or you meet them and you're like, Ugh! and you like turn around and run as fast as you can. But we have this, like, your body knows. Your body knows what is safe for you, right? It knows what's safe. And so coming back to that feeling, feeling is going to be the, the new way of the world, right? It's that That's going to be it. And we have these healthy edges where if just if, if you're listening to this and you're in these moments of, I don't know if I'm ready for this. I've, I'm at the edge. Where do I go from here? You know, ask yourself, is this a healthy edge? And a healthy edge is something that when you ask yourself why, why am I here? How did I get here? Why do I want to go forward? Why am I holding myself back? When you meet those edges and you start asking yourself these questions and you start feeling into the answers, all of the answers back up your desires, right? If the answer to the question is, because this is for me, because this is how I move to this place of personal power and full expression and whatever it is, then go forward. Yeah, exactly. And bringing in breath as well. Mm -hmm. It's available to all of us. Most, I would say almost 
we'll just say to most people, like, because I know some people have a hard ability to like get into breath or depending on your, anyways, we'll just, you know, bring you back to like a tool that is potentially available to most, most humans, right? And like coming into deeper and deeper layers of breath gets you into the deeper layers of your feeling and like allowing you to have the ability to literally have the air to the, the space, the ability to like feel a little bit more and like, like expand a little bit deeper and all of that, like, and not moving it past those edges of, of where it doesn't feel like you can go there. But I promise you on the other side of like riding it a little bit where it's slightly maybe uncomfortable or hard. Ooh, there's bliss. There's pleasure. There is ecstasy. There's ability to like you start opening up your eyes and you're like, wow, I didn't see that color that way. You know, or like that person is extra like shiny and beautiful and like they're just radiating because it's you that has changed, that has impacted yourself to then have like literally like the you could be in the same space and your world world could change like in a simple meditation practice which obviously meditation is extremely powerful it is literally like you'll you could open up your eyes you're like like this is so cool it's so like fascinating there's so many more possibilities that are available there's so many more desires that are maybe clearer like i love the ability to just like feel my way through life and like really experience what is available and receive it like on the next level one of my friends she always says all i need is me and i'm already here right we you are what you need you have the answers to all the questions you have the path within you right and we've got to be that for ourselves feel into that feel it right Oh my goodness. I'm just loving, I'm just loving this, everything, this whole conversation. There's just so many layers to all these pieces. If we wanted to go in and digest and process all of this, but this is the space is like, you get, you get, you get glimpses into our world and like, you get to like, we just get to like play and tease you into it. And we're flirting with you. We're flirting with you. You're welcome. Hello. <laughs> like, um, excuse me, like the quality over here of like humans is just like, we're all, both of us just like giving it. And it, it's so cool to be able to like allow that like deeper space of like go off and to be able to like, you go and feel and experience and integrate and like have your own little moments or like what I do often when I'm listening to powerful human speaking is I literally will pause and write things down or like yeah. introspect on things and, and then I speak about it and I have it, my own process around it or I create something from it and like that's what it's all about and of course like the invitation into my world or May's world or whoever else you resonate with like is there and one of the most beautiful like things is interesting enough like one of my core offerings right now is called flirt with life so it's like actually really fascinating that we kept bringing this in i'm just like of course it is of course it is of course it is this is what happens right and it is this deeper layer of like yeah, like knowing about it without needing for me to go into any of the details you just sort of feel and resonate and you're like you get lean in a little bit deeper into all of all of the different spaces. And that's what I, I guess at the end of the day, like I really want to speak to and like bring in is just like, can you lean in into the world that feel like, mm, yes. And then other worlds like lean out and like be like, no, like the discernment behind that bring boundaries in because they're so sexy. Like boundaries are one of the sexiest things that you could bring in because it allows more space for you to be. Yeah. Yeah. I am so thankful that you're here and that we're having this conversation. Just so much. Just flirt with life. I know that people like, I know my listeners and I know that flirt with life is just going to be something that is going to hit for so many people and invite them, invite them. What is, uh, if people are looking for you, 
Where do they go? How do they find you? Tell us about Flirt With Life. Okay. Beautiful. So I actually have th- kind of like three layers of offerings or even four, depending on what you like and what you enjoy, what's your flavor. But at the end of the day, you could always find me at the Flirt Queen on Instagram or my first and last name, Agnes Sauch, on on the Facebook world. I was like, where's that world? The Facebook world. Um, yeah, that's what's up. And you'll find me on there. And I am offering in person right now while I'm in Canada. I am doing a workshop and I'll probably post more of those while I'm still here. So I'm in like the Toronto area if you're in Canada or if you want to fly over here. It's called Ecstatic Embodiment. And so I'll be doing the first one on May 6th. So that's happening. That's like my like lowest, very accessible layer of like being able to come and like vibe with me, be with me in person. And it is all about like play, expression and dancing. And literally like it's going to be breath work. It's going to be like a two hour experience. Like if you love me and my vibe, like imagine like being in person with me it's just gonna be like yeah like it's just so much shit that's like I can't wait like I am so stoked for this and it's happening at uh, my yoga studio so anyways you can find me on social media and there's more things about that because I talk about that one all the time because that one's like the most the really current 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 one and then you have intimacy which is my one-on-one most luxurious offering which is over three months you could do that with me. I could share more details about that, but essentially it's just like your own custom journey of going into yourself even deeper into that introspection, meeting you where you're at, where you're at and like really having me at like this high level of really being there with you and flirt with life, which is one of my most fun ones because it's just like such like, this is something for women that are busy as fuck, literally like living their life but maybe are so pulled in so many different directions where they can't sit and be somewhere with me all the time, like this level of like every single week. And that's more around like just literally like getting you, me in your pocket where you could like message me on Voxer, WhatsApp, and like being like, okay, this is what's going on. And I respond to you and come back and forth. So it's like a really fun offering. And then you choose throughout the whole month, like when you want to drop into it, like more of a deep dive. So that's like that kind of like on the go, but like super fun and like being like, hey, like I'm on this date. Like what's going on? Like this is what's going on. You're in the bathroom and like kind of like a girlfriend vibe, but like <laughs> I'm like really love this, like kind of energy, like hey this is what's going on I'm freaking the fuck out I'm like yo dude like let's come you know like give it to you real but at the same time you'll get like layers and layers of my wisdom and my expertise which I've just like I've had literally been doing coaching since 2015 so I've got you if you feel resonating with me you talk to me about that and then my last offering which is still kind of brewing but it's called selfish lover and that'll be a group offering selfish lover so I'm reclaiming selfish I'm reclaiming lover it is essentially not your basic self-love course but it's around that you know it's not your, for your basic bitch just like literally you want to get into depth but you want to play with a community that's something that'll be coming and I'll tease you with that later on because that's not something that's ready for you so you can't have it yet sorry <laughs> yeah it's the flirting it's like the dessert you can't have me to have the other courses first so you got choices, boo. You got the choices. And of course, if you just want to come and play in my world, the Flirt Queen's like my favorite place to be. I'm on uh, this, my stories all the time. Otherwise, in person, literally, I'm so in person right now. And on podcasts, like podcasts are like my jam because it makes sense. Like I've got a lot of shit to say. I got a lot of brilliance. And I'm like so excited that I was able to bring all of these different pieces because we didn't know where this was going, but it yeah. went brilliant like boom yeah <laughs> so you're welcome for all of that from both you and i will just uh, appreciate it right <laughs> uh, i've loved this conversation and i have one last question for you yeah ask all my guests and that is what does luxuriously fierce mean to you Ooh. okay you can't see me but i literally like stroked my whole body <laughs> That's what it feels like to me. <laughs> all the way, all the way from my toes, all the way to my head, like this, this ownership and this ability to take up space and 
make your own money and say whatever the fuck you want to. Like, it's like full, full, full expression and ability to just be this badass, like literally badass, but like, oof, I feel it in my entire body, like luxuriously fierce. Like it just feels like, mm, like the lioness that's just like crawling towards you that might pounce on you and you might like it or it might be like a little bit fierce like that that type of like yeah that that's that's my truth (laughs) i love it i love it so much thank you so much for being here this has been amazing i'm so glad that we did this and i i can't thank you enough you're welcome i'm so excited that i got to be here and thank you for having me If you loved this episode or know someone who would, share it and show some love. Screenshot the episode in the app, share it to your Instagram stories along with your favorite fierce moment from the episode. And don't forget to tag me at Luxuriously Fierce Podcast. You can also subscribe, leave a review, and follow me on Instagram at Luxuriously Fierce Podcast and at Luxuriously Fierce underscore. Thank you for listening to today's episode and don't forget to tune in next week for more things Luxuriously Fierce. The Luxuriously Fierce podcast is sponsored by Goddess Support, an oracular online business management company providing you high-level intentional support so you can be the creative and visionary in your business. Goddess Support goes the distance that traditional business coaching doesn't. Imagine having a turnkey team of goddesses that have your back with everything from strategy to implementation. That's what's possible with Goddess Support. We exist to serve the goddess that is you, and we are honored to help fulfill your big vision. Learn more at goddess.support or find us on Instagram at goddess.support.